it looked like they were building a train, so I, I wanted to see if I can get some snapshots of what was going on. As if I didn't have enough chainsaw projects, I had to add a few outboards. And that's a later model, Mercury 9.9. .9. And I spent, oh, probably too much money on it. 600 bucks for a supposed running motor. And, uh, oh, by the way, it came along with this too. A little 14 foot high side. It's got some, some issues. It's not where I want it to be. A little bit weak in the transom probably because I have a long shaft motor twisting on that darn thing versus a short shaft and it's got some cosmetic issues the guy pulled the seat out and put in screws now you have a little battery so I'm gonna have to replace those with with solid rivets and there's some damage right there and there's a split on the bottom where it had hit something pretty hard. None of this stuff is really all that hard, I guess, really. But I figure since the channel is about living life, I might as well show you some of the stupid things I've done. You know, as compared to some of the smarter things. Tool of choice for today. For this project, I've got a couple things I want to do, like I had mentioned before, get this and these off. I want to rewire that trailer. The lights are good, they're LEDs, but the wire I'd used, for whatever reason, just after two and a half, three years, absolutely corroded from the inside out. I've never seen anything like it. So I've got to replace the wire on this, and then I have to readjust that stuff there in order to take this different boat. OGP boat, it's staying right where it is. It's staying up north for a little while. So this boat right here is going to be kind of like the replacement for down here. So I have to readjust OGP trailer to adapt to this boat for now. And then uh, we'll see how it goes over time. Now this is a 14 foot. Discovery is out of business. And one of the things I was looking for on this boat was the higher sides about six eight inches higher and uh, along with that it has a taller transom and uh, we'll see if it's a good boat you know the beauty about these aluminum boats is they're not that expensive number one and you don't have to be a trained anything special in order to work on them you just have to hammer rivets pull things apart all right these are nails I was shot in the transom. See it? Nothing left to that, right? 
I spent 600 bucks on a boat with a bad transom and a bad little hole in it. Now, you know, the funny thing is, one of my friends sent me this post after I told him what I had done. And uh, it was one of these, what did your father tell you to do kind of things? And <laughs> it was, uh, stop casting your lure into the trees. And this would be, much as this was a terrible purchase, it does offer opportunity. And by the way, these are really not structural. And the aluminum is in good shape. Plywood only goes down. So this is not going to be all that hard to fix. It really isn't. You know, it's just a panda neck. It looks like two three-quarter inch pieces sandwich is what this is. So I just sketched the outline using that piece of aluminum right there for this first one and I'll cut it and see how it fits. But I have to get two of them that I can glue together to make this work. And this is marine grade and it has more layers. It's got seven layers whereas the stuff that came out of there had five. I would say it fits excellently and pretty much right where it needs to be. So now I need to build another one just a little bit larger because it'll go past that, past the rivets. This one here butts up against the rivets. So, so far so good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one here for the outline. And then the next one will be just ever so slightly larger. Came out really nice. Came out pretty much exactly what I was looking for shape-wise. I got some pictures I took with a with a camera. I'll, I'll stick up in there. But so there's basically the transom. I made it just a little bit wider because there was about oh I don't know a quarter inch aside that this uh, aluminum was lacking. So I made these a little bit tighter to the to the hull. 
and uh, this is the face of it, right? That's pretty much what came out of it. And it's pretty much ready to receive the, the uh, transom and just get bolted together. Pretty much got the barn pad cut in the way I need, building out uh, dirt out in front of the barn so we can do some stuff a little bit later on coming from this pile of what used to be spoils. So I guess I'm about uh, two-thirds of the way down this top section. And then once I get to that tree down there, that dead tree, there's a whole bunch down there that has to get moved as well. I figure I have about a month worth of uh, moving spoils here so but I'm gonna fuel up and take a few today well that's where things sit right now and that also is where all the spoils are going is out there to build a backyard effectively and uh, we finally have all the rest of the material to finish the building so hopefully the next week or two that happens now I gotta tell you where we got that package was the place. nice folks but they didn't really do a good job for us because we spent a lot of money having people show up and then not have the materials and uh, a couple of pieces of the puzzle which you could probably see is they didn't have the fascia but more than that they didn't have what's called J-channel which goes right at the top of the panels so they couldn't finish off the panels on the ends that's why it's apart we finally got that. We got the garage doors laying on the ground right there. And um, got the J channel to finish off that building. But now we've got to wait for the work cycle to come back around to where we can get people in there and I can get in there and, and finish it off. But it's been pretty annoying. It cost us a couple of months. So when you buy a package building, make sure they actually can deliver all the bits and pieces before you start hiring people to do the assembly you know otherwise they show up you pay them they got nothing to do so anyway and I also cut the back I want to add a lean to out to that one side to the north or to the right hand side from the camera so I cut that back 10 feet and uh, you saw that before and now we're gonna go back to the road I have a lot of work to do on the road and some of the spoils are going to end up right where those piles are. Some of them are going to go somewhere else. Down the end we want to change the shape of the hill over there. When you have the kind of quantities of dirt that we have along with the equipment, these kind of large landscape projects are possible. So now the road looks a little bit different than the last time we took a drive. And then hopefully by this afternoon, I've got the whole top section here done. And then uh, next week or the week after, I'm gonna start working on the bottom section. There is a lot of work to do down there. I should be able to get this done this afternoon. That's my goal.
Well, we got it in there and clamped. The glue is still squeezed out a little bit. Made sure it's staying squeezed. We'll leave it for the 24 hours. Squeezed right out there. So, we didn't do it the proper way, but we did it with, with the time we had. And it'll work just fine. I like the older Mercury's better. Now, we got this one running pretty quick. It had spark and, you know, it ran pretty good. But when we got into the lower unit, I started checking things out and water poured out of that. So basically, the seals underneath the water pump had blown out, or the gasket underneath the water pump had blown out, and uh, basically pumped that full of water. So it's going to be a project. I'm going to have to tear out the lower unit, and it'll be a good video, right? So we're like, what do we do? I mean, I'm not going to be able to make that mercury work in a day, right? It's going to take some parts. And basically we've had this 15 horse Johnson sort of sitting around now for, I don't know, a couple of years. No one's ever run it. It's a little dirty. Probably needs a fuel pump. And I wanted to make sure it pumped. They've got that little P valve down there. So I just put a straight tube to the where that valve goes. And let's just see if it'll start. about it not peeing it. That little plug is plugged. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I guess I should get my tractor for him, but I won't. There we go. All you gotta see. <laughs> it's been the whole show the whole time.